Hi, uh, and welcome to everybody to this talk, which I think uh, promises to be quite exciting. Uh, for me personally, because I may be on the nay side of the uh, discussion, I uh, have very strong opinions about it. Uh, I also think it's been the conversation for the last uh, decade, uh, and it's intensified in the last uh, two or three years. Uh, conversations on both sides of it, uh, while we had uh, lots and lots of communication and also a lot of uh, corporate way of looking at themselves, which was going on, uh, which was aligned to a central purpose. Uh, you also had, in the same while, you know, Mark Pritchard, who incidentally was one of the people who, from marketing, took this entire conversation and did, you know, like a girl, uh, shine uh, bright, or da da da, uh, all of those uh, campaigns. They did a lot of work around their brands. Uh, Levers did a lot of work around their brands. Mark Richard came out and uh, he had a conversation, uh, probably at Cannes, where he was talking about, you know, have we gone too far with uh, purpose and the uh, the communications around it, the way of looking at it. Uh, Levers had some conversation where uh, the investors came in and they spoke, right? So we've been talking about this for the last 10 years. Now, there are people who, investors have come in and had conversations with levers, for example. Are we forgetting the fundamentals of business and going to something which uh, may not be so much uh, tangible for uh, what the business itself does? Uh, I personally think, uh, before I hand it over to the uh, esteemed panel, uh, I think two uh, marketing and advertising and those, both these people were not from either advertising or marketing. Uh, one is Malcolm Gladwell. No, Malcolm Gladwell was a failed copywriter. He's the guy who wrote uh, Blink. He's the guy who wrote Outliers and many, many, many others. He also wrote this book called The Tipping Point. And the first was this whole thing about uh, Hush Puppies, right? A brand which went into the crypt and everything and suddenly came out of nowhere and all the people were wearing it, right? Uh, he attributed to something that the company wasn't doing, right? Some tipping point and the hipsters picked it up because they were opinion leaders who picked it up. The whole world picked it up, right? And he spoke about this as something which was contagious. And for the next five years, advertising and marketing was trying to do something which was contagious, right? Let our conversations get picked up by da da da. Then came in Simon Sinek, he in a video which is very, very popular. I'm sure all of you would have seen it where he draws the three circles, right? What, how, why, right? What do you do? I make computers. How do you make them? We make them very nicely because we are Apple. But the why of it, we exist because we want to make people the most creative people that they possibly can be. This was picked up by many, many people as the why of why an organization should exist, why a brand should exist, and came in the whole thing of purpose, which I personally think was great uh, when it started with, let's say, a Dove doing real beauty sketches, uh, a Pantene doing, you know, uh, boss versus bossy and really got picked up. Now I think that there is a hell of a lot of it. So what became differentiated, right? What became a new kind of a conversation which people would pick up uh, has become something that I find it difficult for uh, people, audiences to differentiate uh, brands within. There are lots of things going for it also. <laughs> uh, so there are a lot of things going for it also. Uh, I'll not get into many of those. There is virality, there is uh, a multiplier effect which you know your conversations can have. It can tie an entire uh, organization or uh, various functionalities of it together. But that's me and I've said my piece and I'll take it over to the panel. I am sure it's going to be a, a very interesting discussion. I uh, We'll throw the first question uh, to you, Meenal. Correct. Neha, yeah, I'm sorry. Meenal, sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, so, Meenal, you uh, look after Sakal. That's certainly one of the places, it's a media brand. Uh, very, very tough to differentiate uh, beyond the typefaces because you get the news from writers, you get the news from uh, PTI, da da da. Right, so, but there is, you know, you have a huge role to play, play in the societal consciousness and how the way the society feels about itself, change attitudes and stuff. Now, uh, how does, you know, Sakal uh, do
do this? Do you do this regularly? Do you look at purpose and define what you're going to be doing for the internal audiences and external audiences? How do you uh, make that happen, right? So do you think, first of all, you know, purpose does unify, does play a role in how the brand would be perceived and uh, grow uh, even business-wise? Thanks. <laughs> well, as many of you might be aware, Sakal Media Group is a legacy brand. It is now more than 90 years old. And any, like any other brand, a media brand also has to remain relevant. And that is only possible in case there is purpose-driven marketing. So I interact with a lot of agencies, a lot of clients, and at times they talk about their brands. But even media has brands, so Sakal is also a brand. And purpose-driven marketing is not a nicety anymore. It is a necessity. And to stay relevant, we do a lot of reader engagement activities. There are different segments which, uh, with which Sakal Media Group engages. And not just for a limited period, it's a regular interaction. So we run a club called Tanishka, which is for ladies, where we try to empower women. So there are different workshops. Uh, and like you mentioned, you also have to be profitable at the same time. Uh, you can't work in isolation by doing just good uh, social work as such. So although we do uh, partner with a lot of NGOs, but at the same time, we partner with brands also to take this activity across the state of Maharashtra. So like I talked about ladies, there is a young inspirator network where we try to empower youth. We try to teach them how to become entrepreneurs and start their own enterprises. It might be small scale SMEs, but it is very useful in today's day and age. And since I am representing media here, so not just Sakal, I think because Sakal is uh, present in Maharashtra, but like the audience is from Delhi, so I like to name a few other activities, like Times of India had done a Teach India campaign yes. some time back. So that might resonate with a lot of people here. So these are things which media is doing to stay relevant in today's age and time, and the purpose defines it. Similarly, Hindustan Times has done an activity called No TV Day where they actually, uh, they implored people to avoid watching TV for a day. It was a very super hit campaign, I'll say. And similarly, like Sakal had done a Sakal bus day, where we implored people to drop their vehicles for one day, don't take your cars or bikes on the road for one day, and only travel to your work by a bus. And this was supported by... Uh, not just NGOs, but by corporates across Pune. So there were uh, the CMD of Mercedes, there was a CMD of Kirloskas, and all those based in Pune, who also went to work on a bus on that day. So I sincerely believe that purpose-driven marketing is here to stay. Uh, quick one again, so when you do these activations, so you have a footprint maybe of a few hundred people, uh, does this translate into uh, an, enga an engagement or uh, an impact on business at a larger scale from what you're doing at a ground level, right? So, uh, do you see an impact on business with the activations that you do uh, on the ground? Yeah, definitely. Actually, that's another part of uh, this thing. It's very difficult to judge the implication of uh, whatever you do socially. But in our case, we do a lot of uh, media surveys. We also interact with our uh, readers, with our audiences, to gauge the uh, effect of any social media activity which we have done. So that keeps on happening on a regular basis. But like you mentioned about this thing, we also have to make sure that we break even for any such activity. So I'll just take example of Mercedes again. So we joined hands with Mercedes a uh, small time, uh, little time back. And we went to different schools in Maharashtra where we taught all the kids the traffic training rules, all the rules related to traffic. And uh, one of the most important things there was uh, not ki, uh, look left and right before you cross the road, but unnecessarily honking, which is going on on Indian roads. Yes. So uh, we try to break even by joining hands with some of our corporates.
no media certainly can have a very large uh, role that it can play yeah Ajay, i forgot to mention this uh, uh, when you talked about uh, you are reaching say hundreds or thousands of people only when you are doing a event in case of media another thing which is uh, to our advantage is that we can amplify it many times over so we carry lot of articles lot of advertising not just on print media but even on television we have a sam tv we have a, a very large presence on the online media it's the number two digital media in maharashtra and print so we amplify it 100 times over yeah no great like uh, again in, as in case of times of india while on ground they would have done a sindoor kela but it was also amplified by tons of things that they did around it and i i know for a fact that even uh, that activation resulted in a huge amount of brand equity that they gained uh, even in the short term right so thank you very much abhi now the next question is actually for you uh, and it's not just about you know the communication and what goes out and how you uh, reach the external audiences and tell them about you know let's say the sustainable practices that may exist or uh, the way you define the purpose how does it help uh, or does it help at all there are lots of uh, disciplines lots of practices lots of departments which exist in any organization right marketing being one of them there is also uh, hr there is also uh, categories and ta da right so uh, does having a purpose at an organization level right does it become like a, a fuel which you know ignites all of these departments bring them around uh, rallying uh, idea Uh, how does it happen in mmt and how do you implement it sure thanks ashish um so it's interesting that the moderator is on the nay side of purpose led marketing um i'm actually on the far yay side of it but have a slightly wider understanding of let's say purpose led marketing right see for me the way the way i am the way make matter looks at it it's actually not purpose led marketing right and and that's i think a part of the question that you also asked that it's not just marketing it's purpose led overall organization growth right and then how do you look at one unifying purpose which is bringing all functions together and that purpose serves as sort of the long term compass which is guiding direction for each individual department and then you can have individual goals in terms of you know short term milestones that a brand team might chase or a short term goal that a product team might chase but it's all guided towards one long term compass that purpose helps you sort of you know stay true to so for make my trip um, you know the way we look at it you sort of start with the consumer like you should do in all functions not just marketing and we said that if a consumer is somebody who loves to travel what does travel do to the consumer and what does travel do to the society in general and that will sort of help you arrive at your place in society and how do you add value to society consciousness as a whole right and beyond the regular you know answer that you get to why do you travel it helps me break free from my mundane routine helps me spend time with my loved ones all of that is a little surface but if you go deep down into what is what does it do to the individual and what does it do to society as a whole what we arrived at was that travel truly helps you grow as a person right you gain more confidence you gain appreciation for different cultures different communities and if travel helps the individual grow a lot more what we also said that was as a society the world would be a better place if we all got to experience it a lot more right now with that place in society if you take a step back and then say okay now functionally what are the challenges that that can come up to solve and to achieve this epitome let's say and he said that travel is extremely important to you as an individual and to society as a place uh, as a whole but the joy of travel can at times be lost to the million loose ends there's so many things that can go wrong right and that's where the purpose of make my trip emerges to say that how do we simply make travel fun and convenient for everyone now if the purpose is defined at a macro level and not at a csr level but to say that the purpose of make my trip for example is just to make travel convenient for everyone i think that can very easily unify what you you fire up the app and the first message you will see is powering magical trips for the last 24 years you look at some of the decisions that we take on revenue you know cancellations and refunds 
it's powered by that unifying thought that how do I make travel convenient for everyone. You look at some of the work we do on marketing and we've done some really good work with, with Ashish, your agency as well. Um, I think it's all starting with that unifying thought that how do I make travel convenient for everyone. And I'll maybe I'll share more examples as we go around the discussion. But to my mind, A, you have to define purpose a little more at a macro level. And then it has to sort of be the starting point and not as one of the points. And you don't have to look at it as a place to differentiate. You call that out as a reason why you're on the nay side of it. And if you're, if you're looking at purpose-led marketing to differentiate versus others, then you're just starting to micro. If you look at it as a unifying strategy driving thought is when you'll find a great value in it. And you think it does right, the various functions that exist in the, yeah, yeah. Uh, Neha, for you, uh, I've always loved your advertising that earworm that you guys created, Amitji loves Bikaji. Uh, absolutely fantastic and I'm sure it had a huge role to play in how you know, the brand equity metrics would have gone up, how the business would have, you know, uh, transformed or grown uh, after that. Having worked with a fair number of, you know, uh, homegrown businesses, we worked like, you know, across my career, uh, many, many, many uh, numbers of those. Uh, so how does purpose play a part in a, a Indian entrepreneur? Very large, but, you know, there is a, a mindset which would be, uh, I'm assuming a little bit uh, different. So how does an organization like Bikaji balance purpose and uh, you know the, the force for good and the force for growth, right? How do they coexist and how do you make that happen? Thank you. So I think about five years, you know, I think what's interesting in a lot of homegrown brands like you uh, say, and I would probably call them family-owned businesses, right. a lot of purpose-driven work was happening just not called purpose-driven work, right? So I think it's only now that a lot of them have started either labeling or sort of getting it under an umbrella. Yes. I really agree with Abhinav in that case that I think we talk about purpose-driven brands, but for probably industries like ours, and especially Bikaji, it's been more about a purpose-driven organization first, right? Um, and that comes through. So to give you perspective, we're the second largest uh, manufacturers of handmade paper in the country. We employ about 5,000 women in the vicinity of our HO, which is Bikaner. And uh, they are employed in such a way they don't have to get out of their houses, right? All the work gets done. And it's just an ecosystem we've created there, created these micro-entrepreneurs. But that is something that's been going on for a while. Did it start as a purpose-driven thing? No. But that's how we sort of built smaller um, parts of our business. Um, secondly, quality. The company is extremely quality conscious in terms of um, even when product prices are going high, I'm talking about, say, um, our um, raw material pricing, you will not see any compromises there. So I think a few of those things at an organizational level were very important. Now from the brand perspective, personally, I, I, I'm kind of on your side in terms of a lot of execution work that's happening on brand comms today has come in from the fact, okay, let me call the agency, let me brief them. There is 15th of August, I'd like something that gets viral. Now, everybody cannot follow the same pattern. You know, certain brands and, you know, there was a camp, Jagori, I think, was a very interesting campaign. People talked about it, a lot of others. But today, I feel even in campaigns in the brand purpose, I'm feeling like a sense of very similar kind of advertising coming, whether it's uh, in terms of empowerment, in terms of religion, uh, gender. So, you know, the, the, the story is basically now seeming like um, there, there are multiple stories going on and then brands are retrofitting it. So I don't think that kind of really works in a bigger way. Uh, I think Abhinav had a very, very fair point in saying, I think for us, for an industry like ours, we're working on it at a very organizational level. And um, I don't think from the, in fact, as a category, you know, it's tough to, it's an impulse category. Uh, some of it, of course, we call it like, uh, there's family and then there is um, impulse. But primarily, snacking as a category is fairly impulse. Sweets as a category is usually about the good moments. So most of our advertising does come through that. I think it's the one organizational part of it. And some other work that we do is, of course, purpose-driven. But overall, I think it's a very category-specific thing to say, 
what are you going to do about it? And purpose is very relevant um, uh, in terms of, um, you know, a brand versus an organization. So I think for us, that's been more critical. We haven't, uh, I mean, I, and I say this here, we haven't evolved to the point of, you know, uh, trying to figure snacking and purpose in the same breath. Um, while, like I said, you talk about investors were listed, uh, there is a lot of talk about, um, you know, um, healthier and all of, um, all of that, and we work on it very actively. But, you know, when we talk about um, at the ground level, what's selling is not that. It's such a small audience right now that while we're catering to it, it's a business. It's, uh, we cannot uh, be possibly employing the kind of people we employ and the teams that we do and the business that we do with that. But are we cognizant? Are we working towards it? Yes. Ten years down, if the, the, uh, the, the larger shift happens, um, I think we'll be ready. But today, I think at a certain price point, to a um, common man to deliver that little moment of joy, whether it's the sweet or a snack, um, that's the purpose for now. So not now comes as much. That still remains Amici, oh, like you. you said. So that is why I was on your side in that sense, but yeah, I mean, largely more organization, not so much brand comms, I feel, yet. Oh, I also agree with you that uh, uh, a lot of uh, family-run, homegrown uh, businesses have always believed in uh, a good way of doing business. Uh, I've worked with Imami a lot, I've worked with Jaguar a lot, Jaguar has like, done uh, things in the area of uh, uh, SDG and creating, you know, big ponds where people can get, you know, water for the entire village and so on and so forth. The largest of them and the most visible of them being GCMF or whatever, Gujarat Milk Producers Federation, which is Amul, right? How they started, they got the uh, entire area and, you know, the, they made a cooperation, they got all the farmers, women, all of them together, and what they did out there was very, very, very congruent with the business of it as well. Uh, it was sustainable, uh, it was for societal good, and it was good for uh, business as well. So lots of people have been doing it, uh, and till the time they made Manthan, they never really went out and talked about and it. You look at Araku and all today, I mean, they're all, I mean, Araku's actually the same thing. They've got the coffee guys together to say, you're really getting underpaid. We get together and we work on it. And they've got the best on the board. Arak so, tak mere ko pata hai. Arak is a brand I didn't know. <laughs> a coffee. It's, a, it's, it's basically yeah, again yeah, yeah. Uh, in, yeah. uh, in Bangalore. Right. So they're working on it the same way. Like the whole they've, Patagonia. They've, kind of yeah, they've right. gotten the plantations together, some of them. Right. They've got the best people on the board and say, okay, look, we're going to help you get the right price. Right. So more about fair price, but they've got them together in a bit of a, yeah, got collective. It. Great. Thanks so much. Are we for you? Uh, I think uh, it's, it's, it's easy to do communications which go out there and talk about the virtues of all of what uh, the organization may or may not be doing, right? Uh, and there is a lot of it happening. How does uh, an organization do this in a way that it's authentic, right? Doesn't look like that there is greenwashing, purpose washing happening out there. It may look like that it's core to the DNA of either the business or the brand that you're running. Uh, so let's maybe uh, go a step back. As human beings, uh, we do a lot of things on a daily basis. Uh, we go to work, we, you know, spend time with family. And there is something which sometimes is missing in each of our lives and we are trying to find it. I think it's the purpose. The moment we find our own purpose, we are driven, we are passionate, we are persistent. There is no push. There is a big pull that that purpose has. I think as marketers, we always humanize brands also. And uh, brands, when they are driven by purpose, when they are established by purpose, they are able to not just go the extra mile, but do a lot more consistently. It is not then based on just the people who are driving it, not just based on what the product is, but it is a long-term purpose that drives the brand through and through. Now, uh, you know, I think uh, to make it easy, maybe we should look at three R's that can 
decide whether the purpose is a you know green wash or it is just you know a eye wash for customers or not first of all uh, relevance does it make does the purpose uh, make any relevance for your brand is there a resonance between what you do and what your purpose is so uh, you know at fnp uh, i'm glad that our brand objective and purpose is the same our brand objective is to spread joy by making celebrations special by making moments special and that becomes our purpose which is driven throughout the dna of the organization so the first thing is relevance whether it is relevant the purpose is relevant to you as an organization or not the second is resonance Vez i have decided the purpose of the brand but whether it resonates with my audience my customers my consumers does that purpose resonate with the larger audience who you are reaching out to as a brand second does it resonate with internal stakeholders which don't just involve the shareholders and the and the you know uh stakeholders but also all your employees do employees also relate to that purpose as much and more and third is result while there is a purpose can you consistently measure the purpose and the result or the outcome that is going to come out of the initiatives that you're going to take as a brand to say yes this is aligning to the purpose that i have you know set out for myself so if these three things are in place then the brand can be much more authentic to itself to the consumers to the customers to the internal stakeholders post that i think from a consumer lens if you look at it today there are a lot of brands which are trying to be purpose driven which find a purpose so that you know it's it's kind of you know invoked to be to have a purpose because consumers do not want to just buy a product they are buying stories they are looking for stories for brand they are looking for the larger purpose with which will maybe resonate with them to be you know in existence in their lives if you do not do that service with justice and you just do a purpose which is a an annual activity every you know once in a year when there is women's day there is a initiative that you do and that has nothing to do with rest of the things every pride month you do something which is related to the lgbtqia community but do not continue it consistently that's lip service and very soon consumers of today they cancel the brand they know that this is not working this is not what is you know real so it has to be real it has to be consistent second is transparency are you able to transparently showcase it to your customers internally and externally that what your purpose is are you living it or you not really living it is it just a tick mark activity or is it really a brand dna which runs across multiple functions multiple initiatives and so on and so forth so how is it that i can bring joy to the ops uh, you know ops guys who are working through and through the day to deliver say gifts on mothers day in my warehouses how is it that i can bring a smile to the customer service executive who's you know uh, running 24 hours on a valentines day what is it that we can do to bring that joy to that consumer to that customer so transparency authenticity and also consistency kind of is what differentiates the brand from being just a green wash just using words like sustainable today i know so many brands which use sustainable as a word very loosely and if you go into the you know the background of it they are at times spending you know are doing more harm to the to the environment than they are you know doing uh, good to the environment but still sustainability as a word is very popular it's a marketing keyword that has, that has come into play so uh, yeah that's what we need to do to make sure that the brand has a long term purpose and it is driven by purpose not just for now but forever so use this not as a buzzword uh, not use this just as something that you would use to just gain traction you would do this as an organization even if you are not to talk about it because this is what you believe in you also mentioned that uh, when you do these uh, activities you know you you uh, create this 
uh, communication and uh, activations around uh, purpose, you also measure after all of them uh, the, the impact of this. So what uh, sort of measure, do you measure impact on brand equity? Do you, what, what are the things that you would uh, typically look at? Very good question. So, uh, you know, there is the brand objective and the brand purpose, right? So for us, the purpose of sharing joy, of spreading joy is also, you know, visible in our NPS results. It is also visible in the social shares we get. Because if we've been able to bring a smile to your face or to your wife's face, who you've, you know, uh, got a bouquet on her birthday, then we've been able to solve the purpose. And if that is happening, then, you know, our NPS will be higher, our, you know, uh, social shares will be higher, and our brand re recall will be higher. People will come to us again and again and again. Because we are able to not just, you know, live up to the purpose, but also deliver it to you to the last mile. So that's what we, uh, you know, look at as a result. This is purely from a consumer side, but there are other results also. So employee happiness, again, we continue to do regular surveys within the organization, which is about how happy and joyful the employees are within the uh, organization. And there are activities that are planned to do that on a, you know, uh, quarter on quarter basis, day on day basis. So look at that number in terms of how you are able to grow that number year on year. How is it that the customer interactions that are happening at the call center uh, through the chat, how is it that you can increase those scores, bring in the joy, that extra smile to that customer. So it's very measurable and that is what then keeps the team also going because they know that whatever we are doing, that effort that they are putting in, it is also resulting into, you know, not just uh, the purpose being, uh, uh, being achieved, but also the brand and business objectives. My next question again to you only is, can I get a job at FNP? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to you, Harmeet, uh, my question before I ask you the purpose question would be, can I get a discount at the body shop? I already told you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so body shop, uh, how does, you know, body shop, you know, look at sustainability uh, as a practice, right? So, uh, how do you do this? Uh, what are the kind of measures that you take to make sure that you're a sustainable organization, uh, you're societally aware, and you're taking steps to, to uh, be sustainable? And how does it, you know, eventually, right, not just lead to uh, something that's a do-good sort of a thing, it's also something that eventually leads to profit and business growth. Sure. So I think, uh, thank you, Ashish. One of my favorite talk points always, whether I'm uh, in my office or I'm speaking in front of you all. So uh, I would just like to first start with that the Body Shop has uh, been the only, only beauty brand way back in 1976. Uh, that time the buzzword purpose was not really existing, as we all know, way back, almost 50 years going to be. Uh, there was always a reason where, you know, where, where the products were produced. But there was a reason by the founder that she didn't only want to invent products or produce these beautiful, organic, natural products, but she also, to, also wanted to support the communities. So, you know, a lot of, like, like almost 30 ingredients of the body shop are sourced uh, worldwide, uh, whether it's sourced from India, some of them, uh, sold from Africa, uh, worldwide, UK, Australia, talk about the countries, and she's gone herself, the founder, and uh, the only reason where she wanted to go to all the different parts of the communities because she wanted to support the marginalized communities over there. So we, uh, so this is like the broader aspect what I'm talking about. Uh, in India, when we launched the Body Shop, uh, which is way back in 2006, uh, of course, uh, the we did, um, you know, we did. Of course, the brand DNA is actually sustainability. Nothing new for us. Uh, very important, cruelty-free. The first beauty brand uh, to actually campaign against uh, animals testing, and uh, of course, being very successful in many, many countries, including China. And that's why you see we're not there. So we we're not present in countries where the uh, products are tested on animals. So uh, we did that in India as well. We campaigned in India uh, and uh, we collected almost 8 million 
signatures to actually uh, produce, you know, to the UN, to the United Nations, wherein uh, we're very proud that collectively the body shop, you know, globally could actually end the uh, animal testing. Coming back, uh, what's happening now at the body shop in terms of in the space of supporting communities, which we are calling now what is a purpose-driven marketing. Uh, we've recently launched a campaign, uh, a program which is called Spark a Change. Uh, we actually launched it last year and uh, the, I think we got fabulous, uh, you know, uh, in terms of a lot of great feedback that people loved it, that we were not only selling uh, products or gifts during the season, which is quarter four, but we were also, we are also supporting, uh, we we're giving it back to the community. So uh, Body Shop has fair trade partners uh, in India, quite a few, and uh, we supported last year uh, a partner way down in south in Madurai, where we supported with the solar panels. So we actually uh, initiate like whatever campaigning we do or whatever programs we actually uh, you know uh, launch. We have we have something where a part of it which goes back to the community. So. Uh, very beautifully, we could actually collect great donation where uh, the uh, you know it could help uh, the children of the female workers in that factory that they are now not needing the electricity or they are they are studying or the education is you know much more comfortable. This year, uh, the campaign which we recently launched uh, the program in October, we are now supporting the Plastics for Change. Uh, this is a com this is a community which uh, promotes recycling, the plastic recycling. And what we, the body shop is doing, we are supporting the waste pickers. So uh, we are supporting almost 2,000 uh, waste pickers and their families in term their education, insurance, health insurance, and also making the women independent, uh, more independent financially. So the, the women at PFC uh, waste pickers, uh, they are actually earning like almost 22% higher wages because of the uh, support what we are actually providing to them. Uh, so this is something which I would say uh, purpose-driven marketing. Purpose is actually now, you know, it's like a buzzword. Every company wants to do something and look good probably. So there's absolutely the body shop is, uh, I think that's one of the reasons I'm with the brand since its inception in India that uh, there's much more to just selling products is much more uh, we need to do. So business is not just making money, but it is a force for good. So we want to, we have, I believe uh, uh, in the space, in the beauty space where uh, if we say we are organic, we are vegan, we get certifications, you know, it's, it, we got 100% vegan certification this year, in fact, in January. But what we're doing in turn to our customers and what we are, actually communicating to our customers, but we're delivering as well in terms of not only the products, but also what we are doing in the background that is supporting communities, protecting planet, helping, you know, all f and doing a lot many programs. So these are the big programs I'm talking about, but, but the body shop is very busy. We all keep doing small programs all, all the year round to support people. So uh, just uh, next week we'll be going to old age homes. Uh, we always do that in Diwali, and uh, we go and spend time with them. We donate, of course. We always donate. So we go and help out people as much as we can. Yeah. Beautiful. Can only expect. From, from an organization like uh, The Body Shop, I'll direct a, a quick one to you, Nikhil. Uh, uh, how does you know, the force for good right? The things that you do around either sustainability or just like, you know, living a certain purpose and all. How does it work with the younger audiences, the Gen Z, I'll not even count millennials among the young people anymore. Uh, how does it work with the more aware Gen Z sort of audiences? Thanks for the question, Ashish. Uh, I think uh, Gen Z is more aware, as you said, and they not only buy products for the value which comes with it, as uh, Avi rightly pointed out, they buy products for the stories, for the brand love they have, and they buy products which resonates with their identity. So if, you know, if I'm consuming a certain product or wearing a certain brand or using a certain cosmetic brand, it resonates with my identity. This is what I stands for. So this aligns with my values. 
so they care deeply about the purpose of the brand and as they are more aware as to more information so they understand you know where these products or ingredients are being sourced from what is the carbon footprint of a brand and you know how sustainable or what how ethical are their labor practices so we have seen certain brands being cancelled because of you know wrong labor uh, practices whether in uh, sourcing or some other uh, supply issues so this is definitely one thing third they are extremely i won't say digital savvy but they are digital native so for everything for every solution digital is the go to place so uh, whatever they want to know you have to engage with as a brand with them digitally you should have a long term digital engagement strategy in place and you should focus not only you know just giving your brand communication information you should be focusing on building a community engaging in them so that they feel they are part of the story they are part of the narrative the more they buy into the purpose of the brand the more they will feel you know then they will be advocating more about the brand so as gen zs they i think are the ones who truly care about and you know uh, while they are a minuscule population but i think they are rising 30 40% of indian uh, consumers are gen z and they uh, consume a lot and they are aware about all these things yeah, have they influenced the opinion of a larger set also in a much bigger way i know we've run out of time there is a red placard which says times up but we'll take two three minutes more because it's a very important uh, question maybe of relevance to a lot of us so i will take two minutes certainly yeah. but yeah. due to the paucity of time i believe we can only squeeze in one question yeah yeah so like one quick question to all of us we'll start from abhinav uh, now this is a tricky place for any brand to be we've seen uh, in the past uh, with the best of intentions we i'll not take names uh beautiful campaigns beautiful you know the heart in the right place and all of that but you've gone out there and you suddenly realize that people are finding you know a big issue with this and you know how pe- people today can be because they you don't talk to them from a pedestal and all of that they can talk back to you right how do you make sure that you don't fall on the wrong side of that conversation like one or two lines uh, starting from up you know how do you not fall on the wrong side of how do you make sure you're... like you know you're doing something you know you're talking about how you growing so many uh, mangroves and trees and all of that they come mm-hmm. back and tell you but you know another brand that you have in your portfolio mm-hmm. is using da 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 something that you never thought about yeah. right it's happened to leavers they did da beauty sketches da 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 they came back to them about what axe was doing right yeah. so how do you make sure that you yeah i think uh, for the way i look at it it goes back to what i shared earlier as well that if you're looking at purpose led marketing to create differentiation and looking at it to create virality and just you know get that quick 2 minutes of fame uh, you are likely to fall on the wrong side of you know uh, of criticism um as long as how you've defined your purpose is more ingrained to the way you are running your business and harmeet gave you know uh, uh, beautiful examples of how body shop has you know uh, sustainably working with the community ingrained into the dna of the organization you are less likely to you know uh, face that criticism the only other thing that i'll add in the interest of time is that in case you do fall on the wrong side and you do get that criticism we've seen that it's much more important to own it up and take criticism and feedback Uh, again i'll not take names um it's quite easy to reject feedback uh, and you know continue with your stance and then face more of it and lose consumer trust over a longer period and it's much harder to say that okay we made a mistake um and we'll figure it out better the next time we run something uh three words authentic uh act act not as in acting but as in action right. and uh, assess i'll make it shorter two words be real that's it i'll say only one word credible as far as news is concerned i have no 
I'm just there. So uh, I, I should be at zero, but I'm just saying it. But I think um, Abhinav just said what we've been talking about. I think purpose has to be the DNA of an organization. Does not mean that brands don't have purpose, but if it's not going to be a part of your DNA, likely, I mean, you could wing it well, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, people see through it eventually. Somewhere you're going to sort of not going to be there yet. So. Consistent. I think it should not be lip service. Your brand objectives, brand purpose, corporate uh, communications, everything should align and streamline regularly through one thing, that it should be consistent uh, with a purpose. Thank you so very much. I can see you waiting eagerly yeah. to shoo us out of here. But we had a great discussion. I am personally very vested in this kind of a topic and I think uh, great views and everything. Hamara hamper hamari wait kar rahe. Jiske liye hum yahan pe. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much.